prayed that he would live in us, and we he in him. Through his glory and our faith, may we all come together in unity and love. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity with the Holy Spirit and art one God, forever and ever. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, 
that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. Easter, 
We are in spiritual preparation for what is to take place ten days after the ascension of our blessed Lord. For next Sunday, we will celebrate the birth of the church, the Christian church, as we celebrate the solemnity of Pentecost. For some who may not know that today's second reading, taken from the book of Revelation, is also the close of the New Testament. The one, as it is said, who gives testimony will say, Yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Jesus tells us that he will be with us until the end of days, but not with us in a physical manner. He tells his apostles at the Last Supper, it is important that I go away, because if I do not go away, the Holy Spirit will not come unto you. My brothers and sisters, Jesus walked for three and a half years. He had 12 chosen ones who represented the 12 tribes of Israel. He had, in one reference, 70 disciples. In another reference, 72 disciples. And all those who came to hear the blessed Lord have come to the understanding that on Ascension Thursday, Jesus was taken out of their sight. And the only thing that they had after he left was the words that he spoke unto them. I consider this Sunday's Gospel, as I said, one of the most sacred readings of all Holy Scripture. For it is one of the few times that to that depth Jesus prayed unto the Father audibly and was witnessed by those who were present at the Last Supper. This is what we call the High Priestly Prayer. And John, who we read in the Gospel according to John, the one who was reclining next to Jesus, heard these words. They may not be the exact words, but there are people nowadays that can actually tell you a conversation they had years ago. And I am sure that as we teach that Holy Scripture is through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, Jesus himself said, the Holy Spirit will bring all truth and will bring to you everything that I had said unto you. And so what does Jesus pray? Before he leaves and before his passion and eventual crucifixion. I'm sure that he was afraid for what was going to happen. But Jesus prayed not only for himself. He prayed for those who would remain. As he prays for us who have remained. And what does he pray for? A oneness. We say in Holy Scripture that there is one Lord, one faith, and one baptism, as Paul tells us. And oneness is so important because if there is a oneness, there is unity. And strength is in unity. And we all proclaim, according to our baptism, that we believe in God, we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we believe in the Holy Spirit. But this oneness, and please take the bulletin with you. Read it again. Reflect on what the words are being said. And Jesus prays and says, that they may all be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you. It is, it is pretty easy to understand of the closeness that Jesus and the Father had. But Jesus continues that they may also be one in us. This is an invitation that the Lord calls upon each of us 
to enter that oneness with not only God the Father and His blessed Son, Lord Jesus, but also with one another. Jesus says, I have given them the glory you have given me, so that they may be one. Jesus gave us through his words and through his teachings the way by which we may be one. And we know that Jesus is leaving. That when the Holy Spirit came upon those at Pentecost, there were some who said it was the Spirit of Jesus that came upon us. And what is the end of Jesus' mission? Not only to die on the cross, but as he said in John 17, 3, that they may all know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Jesus tells us by these few words, we can and we will through our faith and belief attain eternal life. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
most holy trinity in which we make in remembrance of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, that it may add to their honor and aid our salvation. May they, whose memories we honor on earth, intercede for us in heaven. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted by God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice to your hands, to the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the benefit of His Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, Gathered about this altar, we offer you these gifts in our lives. May your presence come alive within us to do more through us than we could ever accomplish of ourselves. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Accept and to confirm this offering 
and to make it pleasing to yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. Again, he gave thanks to you. He blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do these things, do them in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious <laughs> we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, and an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy, and accept them as you receive them. Your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which our high priest Melchizedek offered you a holy sacrifice and a magnet host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, to that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace. The same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all rest in Christ, grant we pray a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, Bless and freely give us all these good things. <clears throat> Through him, with him, in him, all honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever, Instructed by our Savior's teaching and following the divine example. 
temple, we say with confidence, shall I return unto the Lord. For all the graces he hath rendered unto me, I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord with my praise while I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. Be 
behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, Lord. Holy Father, 
Protect them in your name that you have given me, that they may be one as we are one. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. Most gracious God, our Father, you enlighten us through your Son and strengthen us through his body and blood. Bless us now so that we, united in faith, may manifest the wonders of your love. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and art one God forever and ever. Being human, 
I don't mention the people um, that really give to the church um, momentary lapse in memory uh, as we get a little bit older. Uh, hopefully it doesn't get worse. But I wanted to thank Mr. Walter Pekarski, um, who over the past weeks and over the years have given, has given much of his time for our cemetery and also to Don Strosky. At the Memorial Day, I was very, very proud that our cemetery looked as good as it did. And at that time, we were also able to, to raise the American flag. And I think there's a lot to be appreciative of and grateful for people like Walter and Don who gave up their time, as well as for all those who came and prepared the grave sites for Memorial Day. I'm happy to announce that uh, this coming Tuesday at 9 o'clock, the, um, they're going to start to take the window out. Uh, it's, it's, it's been long in coming, and uh, I am so happy that they're going to start the work. And somewhere in the future, we hope to be able to have, because an invitation was extended to us, to go to their studio. But as I said to David, uh, I think it would be better when we were able to come to the studio and to see the work that you're doing on our window. Um, I placed in the announcement uh, announcements today about our 90th anniversary. Um, much has been done and much is to be thankful for. There are still things that we will be working on, but as it stands now, um, we're, we're doing okay. Uh, a letter was prepared, um, and I'm so thankful that, uh, that I was able to have uh, Eric and also Bill to, uh, uh, to kind of proofread it. And so this should be coming out very, very shortly to our parishioners as well as to our businesses. Uh, it's been a busy week. Um, I had a chance to meet with uh, Mr. Sonam Lama. Andrea and Teresa, you know that uh, we, we talked about, um, about an angel that would grace our, our garden. And uh, meeting with Sonam, uh, and for those of you who may not know, he is involved with other Tibetan brothers to do beautiful stonework. And so we had a chance to go to the garden and kind of get our uh, ideas together. And um, it looks like there's something that's going to be beautiful very beautiful that they will be giving to the parish as a gift in appreciation for us helping them. Uh, let's see, what else? Appreciative for the altar cloths that will change. We will be entering into the season of Pentecost. Um, also, I'm happy to announce that catechetical instruction has begun, as well as this past week, uh, a lot of planting of flowers. Not only with the rectory, but you also realize the two pots as you were leaving the church. There were some other things that we would like to do. In this, our year of the 90th, we really want to have it beautiful. And there are many other projects that we want to tackle by August 25th. Finally, the month of June is, has been set aside by our church as the month for appreciation of our clergy. On Father's Day, there will be a special collection that will be taken for the clergy pension fund. Um, I bring this as a heads up. And on clergy appreciation day today, you, we have Father's Day, and we have Mother's Day, and we have Youth Day, but the church has set aside today as Clergy Appreciation Day. Um, a simple thank you. Uh, there are some who, who feel that the priest works one day out of the week and that um, I kind of kid around with Wayne that, uh, you know, I, I like to sit down during the course of the day, watch TV, eat cornflakes, and watch the Three Stooges. But uh, the, the fact remains is that we should, be, we should be appreciative because there are a lot of things that take place behind the scenes that people may not know. But anyway, are there any other announcements that I failed to mention today? None being said, 
let us offer prayers. Again, we have found another shooting that took place where 12 lost their lives. And it, it seems like it is never ending. So uh, we, let us pray today for not only the living, but also for the deceased. Let us remember in prayer 12 who lost their lives and 12 families who were affected. May God bless all of us until we meet again. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us now and Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, as now, and as it was in the world, and Amen. And for the repose of the souls of all the faithful departed, eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 